Sasha Baron Cohen, or SBC if you're nasty, introduced himself to American audiences back in 2003 with The Ali G Show. But it was the year 2006 that he released Borat, and you couldn't walk three feet without hearing, My wife! My wife! Unfortunately, he's been laying pretty low these last few years, and here's why. Can she come for desserts? Absolutely not, and neither can you. Sasha Baron Cohen made Ali G, Borat, and Bruno household names, but as of late 2023, all three of those characters are dead, figuratively speaking. Baron Cohen originally ditched his Ali G and Borat alter egos in 2007 following the release of Borat. King in the castle, king in the castle. Have a chair, I have a chair. And in 2016, Baron Cohen reminded fans that Borat was still retired and made it clear that Bruno was too. Nowhere in the script does it say he pauses for an inordinate period of time. That made it all the more surprising when Baron Cohen did bring Borat back one more time in 2020 for Borat's subsequent movie film. While fans might have loved his character's pranks, especially the ones that put bigots and homophobes on blast, they were also dangerous. According to a 2021 interview with NPR, Baron Cohen said that he had to don a bulletproof vest while filming the newest Borat movie, out of fear he might be shot. Welcome to America, baby! SBC's comedy is deliberately outrageous, and he's accused of sometimes going too far. But he's not pushing buttons for no reason. In a 2006 interview with Rolling Stone about Borat, he said, I think part of the movie shows the absurdity of holding any form of racial prejudice, whether it's hatred of African Americans or of Jews. In other words, the joke isn't always what Borat says. It's what he makes other people feel like they can say. In my country, yeah. they uh, take them and they take them to jail and finish take them. them Hang them. Yes. That's what we're trying to get done here. High five. One infamous segment of the Ali G Show showed Borat leading a bar full of people in Tucson, Arizona, in a sing-along to the fake song, Throw the Jew Down the Well. Baron Cohen recalled, That was a very controversial sketch, and some members of the Jewish community thought that it was actually going to encourage anti-Semitism. But to me, it revealed something about that bar in Tucson. And the question is, did it reveal that they were anti-Semitic? Perhaps, but maybe it just revealed that they were indifferent to anti-Semitism. Still, just because this comedy has a purpose doesn't mean people aren't allowed to be offended. From LGBTQ groups who think Bruno is a little much, or the entire nation of Kazakhstan still deal Dealing with his bull I get the clock radio. He cannot afford. Great success. Sasha Baron Cohen stunts go hard, but not everybody finds his antics funny. In September 2008, flamboyant fashion reporter Bruno crashed the famous Milan Fashion Week, and as the national newspaper La Repubblica commented, violated the sacred rituals of high fashion. Yes, rituals, because those virgins aren't going to sacrifice themselves to Prada. During a show by Spanish designer Agatha Ruiz de la Prada, Baron Cohen and crew used fake passes to infiltrate the backstage area where he wreaked havoc in a full-body Velcro suit. He somehow ended up on the catwalk with a whole crap load of clothing stuck to his body and proceeded to strut his stuff before organizers cut the lights. Puno was out. He was forcibly removed by security and had to explain himself to the Italian police. I would have loved to be a fly on the wall for that interrogation. Remember kids, you can always do an Italian accent, it's never racist. The disruptive stunts were shown off in Cohen's Bruno, but not everyone appreciated Baron Cohen's gate crashing for the sake of his art. A spokeswoman for the National Chamber of Italian Fashion told The Telegraph after Cohen's Fashion Week stunts, everybody is talking about it. Some people were very angry and annoyed. When you pull the kind of stunts that disrupt, disparage, and generally cause disarray, you're bound to find yourself languishing in legal hell. Case in point, Sasha Baron Cohen is a lawsuit magnet. Okay, let's speedrun this mother. The executive director of Desert Valley Charities unsuccessfully tried to sue the people behind Bruno for upwards of $25,000, claiming a prank that Baron Cohen had pulled at a bingo game left her confined to a wheelchair. A Palestinian grocer settled a slander suit against both Baron Cohen and David Letterman for defamation of character after being portrayed as a terrorist in the same movie. Two South Carolina college students, a Baltimore driving instructor, and a Macedonian singer all tried to sue over issues taken with Borat, as did the residents of the Romanian village Glod. And that's just the start. In addition to upsetting basically every Eastern European village ever, Baron Cohen managed to affect 
defend the country of Kazakhstan by portraying its people as backward and bigoted. A prominent Kazakh cinema distribution manager told Reuters, We consider this movie offensive, a complete lie, and nonsense. Pissing off an entire country might be impressive, but it's just another Tuesday for this guy. That manager added, quote, It's a shame that some Americans will probably believe what they see there. However, Kazakhstan eventually bought into that old adage about all publicity being good publicity, and Deputy Foreign Minister Rakhad Aliyev even invited Baron Cohen to Kazakhstan. So Borat himself could see that, quote, women drive cars, wine is made of grapes, and Jews are free to go to synagogues. What is the most popular thing in the world? Music. No. At the height of his infamy, it was basically impossible to get an interview with Sasha Baron Cohen. The same could not be said for Ali G, Borat or Bruno, who are more than happy to give their two cents about, well, anything. In my country, only time you can have more than five women gathering together mm -hmm. is either in a brothel or in a grave. Okay, uh... <laughs> As you can imagine, this didn't exactly give viewers an inside look at the man behind that glorious mustache. Before Baron Cohen promoted The Dictator on Today in May 2012, the actor had only done an astonishing two interviews out of character. But as with all things SBC, there was a method to his madness. He explained, Well, the movies that I did up until now, they involved real people, and so we wanted to limit the exposure for lawsuits. At the moment, I think I have the Guinness World Record for most sued actor in history. But basically, if people saw that I was me, and that Borat was not a real person beforehand, then they could injunct the movie and shut the movie down. It would have been like a Scooby-Doo villain pulling his mask off halfway through the episode. How do you pull a fast one on your unsuspecting victims if you've been basking in the media spotlight the whole time? These days, Sasha Baron Cohen doesn't shy away from the camera as much, but that doesn't mean he's given up on screwing with them. That's one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. In the immortal words of your insufferable film snob friend, Hollywood ain't what it used to be. And clearly, Sasha Baron Cohen agrees, and he thinks that Tinseltown would have passed on his early films if they were being pitched today. He told The Telegraph, I think studios are becoming more reluctant to take big risks. They're all owned by multinationals now and have to show profits. I want to be a star in, in a huge Hollywood movie. Can you make that happen? No. Still, unlike your insufferable film snob friend, Baron Cohen doesn't think Hollywood's gotten too far off track. He explained, If it wasn't for the Academy Awards, studios would only make movies to make money. Because of the Academy Awards, studios make movies to be good as well. Baron Cohen might appreciate the Academy for keeping quality in Hollywood, but the feeling is certainly not mutual. The actor landed himself in hot water with the powers that be not only once, but twice. First by ruining Ryan Seacrest's suit on the red carpet, and later by making an appearance as Ali G. Unforgivable crimes, we know. The actor admitted, I think my publicist got into a bit of trouble and I doubt if I'll be invited back. Gonna move it on a little bit. We've come a long way since 2006. A lot of the jokes that Sasha Baron Cohen makes in the first Borat film simply wouldn't fly today. Even though it's easy to assume that there's no line that the actor will cross, that's not exactly true. There are plenty of lines and new ones are being added all the time. Despite Sasha Baron Cohen's best jokes being made with strangers on the street and clueless interviewed subjects, his characters are often fleshed out in the writer's room. Talking about the Brothers Grimsby, which was completely scripted and suffered terribly for it, he elaborated, We will do a joke that makes us laugh in the room, and we say, can we do this joke? And then there is a discussion of, is it moral to do, and is it ethical to do? Is it too far? Uh. Oh god, this is disgusting. With characters as clueless as Borat, outrageous as Bruno, and as painfully stupid as Nobby Grimsby, their jokes often do end up going too far. He continued, There are a lot of jokes that I would not make. I am continually filtering stuff that is too much. Too much is a perfect description of Borat and Bruno, but given the changing times, Baron Cohen has felt the need to course correct. That might not be doing wonders for his brand though, which is built around being over the top offensive. May the patriarchy go to hell! Nice! Not nice! Don't mansplain to me. Feminist. When Sasha Baron Cohen released Borat in 2006, it was one of the biggest surprises of the year. Despite not having a massive reputation stateside, Baron Cohen's flick raked in a bonkers $262 million worldwide on a budget of just $18 million. Not only that, but everyone from your neighbor to your boss was constantly quoting it. Respect is nice. 
The surge in popularity made Baron Cohen and his character seem like an extremely attractive option for Hollywood studios. However, his newer films haven't replicated the lightning in a bottle, or rather the Baron and Ice Cream Truck success of the first Borat again. His next release, Bruno in 2009, had a strong opening day, but enthusiasm cratered almost immediately. It did less than half of what Borat did domestically in the US and Canada, $60 million, with more than half of that on the opening weekend. His 2012 film, The Dictator, had a rough opening weekend at just $4.2 million and failed to top the $60 million mark domestically. His worst by far was 2016's The Brothers Grimsby, which lost money on a $35 million budget. For some reason, the promise of seeing Baron Cohen climb inside an elephant wasn't enough. Baron Cohen's most recent feature, 2020's Borat's subsequent movie film, was released directly to Amazon Prime for streaming. And even though Amazon said it did well, that was disputed almost immediately. The members don't lie, unless they do. Baron Cohen has simply never been able to replicate the success of Borat, and it seems to be making some studios weary of any big budget projects with his name on them. Lots of Sasha Baron Cohen fans would love to make an unwitting appearance in one of his movies, as long as they're able to keep themselves from saying something horrifically offensive. The comedian has found himself in legal trouble several times for showing his subjects true colors, and some of those subjects are the most powerful people in America. Baron Cohen is the Lee Harvey Oswald of comedians. After all, he's always setting his sights on politicians. Lots of elected officials would like nothing more than to go back in time and stop themselves from talking to one of his characters. Going back to Borat in 2006, Baron Cohen filmed a scene with former congressman Bob Barr Jr., after which Barr had the comic thrown out of his office. Uh, my wife, uh, she uh, make this cheese. Very nice. She make it uh, from a milk from her teeth. But that was nothing compared to his antics in the 2018 Showtime series Who is America, which skewered numerous politicians. Sarah Palin complained that she was tricked into doing an interview and made fun of, and former Vice President Dick Cheney was fooled into signing a fake waterboard kit. A former state representative from Georgia, Jason Spencer, resigned from his position in the government after he was in an episode and yelled racial slurs while walking around in his underwear. Finally, former judge and US Senate candidate Roy Moore sued Baron Cohen Cohen after being made to look like a pedophile on the show. When Baron Cohen revived his most popular character for 2020's Borat's subsequent movie film, he caught former New York governor Rudy Giuliani in what seemed like a compromising position with a young female interviewer, igniting a massive controversy. Hello, what's going on here? Look at this guy. I forbid this union. Baron Cohen has certainly rubbed some politicians the wrong way, maybe just enough to scare off some Hollywood studios. Before Borat and Bruno got their own movies, there was The Ali G Show. Booyakasha, check this out, yo! Back in the late 1990s and early 2000s, Sasha Baron Cohen made a name for himself through his character Ali G, a rapper with few talents and even fewer manners. As funny as some of Ali G's antics could be, there were many critics of his alter ego who found the character offensive and accused Baron Cohen of mocking black culture. Check it, today we is chatting about medical ethics. In 2007, after the release of Borat, Baron Cohen announced that he was retiring Ali G's character, but it didn't last. Nine years later, he brought the character back for the 2016 Academy Awards, with Olivia Wilde as his embarrassed hostage, and without the prior knowledge of the Academy. The stunt received mixed reviews, with some critics saying that it was outdated. Nevertheless, he once again revived the rapper in 2021 during a stand-up performance that went largely unnoticed. Considering Baron Cohen's never-ending quest for attention, it appears that he's intent on bringing him out once again. Reports indicate that he will be devising a new stand-up routine featuring Ali G, but only the man himself knows for sure. For many Baron Cohen fans, it's welcome news to see a long dormant character return, but there's a reason why the comedian first hung up the beanie and goggles all those years ago. The political and social climate in America has shifted dramatically since Ali G's heyday in the early 2000s, and the character's cultural appropriation of black culture might not go over too well with some audiences today. It might be best that Ali G stays in the 2000s, along with denim skirts and Dane Cook.